Welcome back to RFL. I'm Andrew Whitman. Today, as people in Boston and other parts of the country celebrate the victories of the Boston Marathon, others are still sitting in silence. They're pausing in remembrance of the three people who were killed during the devastating terror attacks that also left more than 200 people injured. The tragedy in Boston, just one of the many acts of evil that have paralyzed this nation in recent years during the month of April. Family, friends, and survivors of the shooting at Virginia Tech also mourning this month. 33 people were killed on April 16, 2007 by a lone gunman who opened fire on the campus in Blacksburg, Virginia. The anniversary of the tragedy passed quietly by after being overshadowed by the Boston bombing anniversary, which was held one day prior. And during this Easter weekend, as many celebrated the, the time of renewal and rebirth, many in Colorado mourned to remember the 13 people who were killed when high school students gunned down anyone in their path at Columbine High School. That happened on April 20th, 1999 hate overwhelmed two boys enough to take people from our lives and now this is what we do around Easter. We are part of an unwanted family. <laughs> um, none of us asked to be part of this family, this family of survivors of mass tragedy. And another community out west also mourning this month. 21 years ago on April 19, 1993, the FBI moved in to break up the Branch Davidian polygamous sect in Waco, Texas. 79 people were killed there after the people inside set fire on the compound. Something that one is the families we need to keep going, make sure our children remember because, you know, when we forget, that's when it happens again. So we don't want to forget. And there's more. In Oklahoma, people also pausing to remember the 168 people who were killed 19 years ago on April 19, 1995, at the bombing at the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building. The bomber said he was seeking revenge for the deaths in Waco. Victims' families gathered over the weekend in solemn tribute, honoring the lives that were lost. Which begs the question, as we talk about all of these tragedies that have happened in this month, all of them connected by one other commonality, which is that they were all homegrown acts of terror. None of these were the terrorists that we saw attack the World Trade Center twice or the other attacks that we've seen. Do we tend to lose sight of the fact that homegrown terror is an issue? Because it seems to me that it's almost impossible to stop. Well, I don't think these were cells. I don't think they were organized like terrorism overseas, um, but they are acts of terror. And, and because they're from Americans, because they're not an Al-Qaeda cell that you can hopefully track and trace and, and maybe stop them before they're able to act, it does beg the question of whether you can ever protect yourself enough. Is there anything that we can do? Is there anything more that we can do to try to... Well, you put it in the perspective of how many people lose their lives in automobiles. I think of all the ways that people lose their lives. Uh, I think of how people lose their lives um, eating food they shouldn't eat. I mean, it sounds a little crazy, but there are lots of ways that people are losing their lives. And so these are very dramatic and we focus in on them, but they're in comparison to automobile injuries. But, but for in some automobile crashes, there are innocent victims, plenty of them. If, you, if you're eating the wrong foods or if you're smoking or if you're doing things that are unhealthy, you're contributing to that. Obviously, the fear of terrorism that can happen to anybody, the same way that it, a, just a random shooting can happen to anybody on a, on a given day. I just wonder, because we talk a lot about protecting ourselves from, from terror, you, in a lot of ways you really can't protect yourselves from all of the bad things that are there. Yeah, no, I mean, I think back and it's shocking. You, I remember each and every one of these incidents and how stunning they were when they occurred. And I agree with the congressman, they happened for a variety, it seemed to be a variety of reasons, right? There's not, you know, one political reason which binds all these together. Certainly the timing does and the fact that they're all, you know, acts of domestic terror, but they're all for various reasons, whether it's, you know, you're talking about Columbine or what happened in Oklahoma City, which probably is, you know, one of the closest to kind of a political act of terrorism. Mm -hmm. And I'm not so certain to your point that we are any closer today, unfortunately, than we were 20 or 30 years ago to being better able to solve these problems and to catch these acts before they occur because they seem to be so kind of um, individualistic in a way and, and difficult to track. And so, you know, I, I'm not so certain law enforcement is any closer. And, you know, we've had a lot of discussion about removing guns and those kinds of things, but are we really any closer? Sadly, probably not. And it's haunting if it's a coincidence, and it certainly seems like it is, that they're all around this time every year. Looking to take a break on RFL. We'll be right back after this.